similar to the loss of a diary, the theft of a phone can feel like a violation. Listen, if you ask me, I would rather somebody take $700 from me flat than my phone. Because my phone, yeah, it is my lifeline. Private conversations, personal photos, and years of memories are completely lost. But there's a strange pattern. Y'all won't believe where this phone is right now. Stolen phones are showing up at the same location. And I recently just got a ping that my phone has been turned on. One person traveled across the globe for answers. This story is insane. A year after our first guest's iPhone was stolen in New York City, these photos of a stranger in China started appearing on his new phone. Is the multi-trillion dollar company involved? How much he estimate that was? Uh, I don't know, like, uh, at least 10,000. I mean, more than that, right? Like, probably 50,000. Let's dive into the mysterious disappearance of iPhones. When you're carrying a piece of technology that's identifiable, nearly weightless, and can run upwards of $1,000 for the latest models, well, things tend to go missing. This is a fact of life in the digital age, where the theft of electronics no longer requires armed robbery or a home invasion, but merely a moment of distraction and the faintest touch. And lately, festivals have become the perfect arenas for thieves to hone their craft. Over the weekend, Austin police have arrested 33-year-old Johan Malpica and 35-year-old Holman Malpica in connection to stolen cell phones during the festival's first weekend. When your phone gets stolen at Lala. Whether it's the noise, the crowds, or the chaotic atmosphere, there's something about these venues that make concert goers easy prey. Imagine hundreds of music fans crowded at a concert. It would be something like Christmas for cell phone thieves, and it was. You're often at concerts close to each other, brushed up against each other, and you wouldn't necessarily know if someone took something that was hanging out of your pocket. I felt someone like mess with my bag, and I turned around to see what was happening, and I swear there was this girl standing there, and she just went like, hi. And while some thieves are caught in the act, hey, yeah. he stole that sh This the lady bag, yeah. picketing pocketed me yesterday, and so many others today at something in the water festival. Hey, she's still the phone. Yes. Others escape with substantial hauls of stolen devices. The officer found 92 cell phones in two big garbage bags. The officer said that today we reported over 104 phones stolen. That's a crazy amount in one day. Upwards of 300 people have been on Facebook saying that their phones were stolen from EDC. As for where these phones end up, well, in this case, it appears the old adage is true. It really is always the last place you look. I recently just got a ping that my phone has been turned on. <laughs> Y'all won't believe where this phone is right now. If you said China, you're absolutely correct. Half you get a phone stolen at a music festival and they sell it overseas. My phone was stolen at Astral World almost a month ago. Now it's in my China. My phone was stolen a month ago. Just got a notification to say it's been found in China. How's your day going? Some person stole my iPhone 12 Pro while I was rolling loud yesterday. So here's an update. It's in China now. When your iPhone that got stolen at Countdown ends up in China. When your phone gets stolen in London and ends up in China. When your phone gets stolen at the Life is Beautiful Festival in Las Vegas in September, and you get notified that it's been found in China two months later. While the details of these stories differ, the basic outline remains the same. A phone is stolen, at which point the location is either turned off, or the victim gets the lucky chance to watch their iPhone's location drift further away. I've been able to watch it pop up on the map on finding my iPhone. The first place it ended up was this high-rise condo on the bay in Miami. Before it makes the pilgrimage to China, this is also around the time when the texts start arriving. Thieves often pose as Apple support to trick the owners of these stolen phones into unlocking their devices. Don't click any of these links, that's just a bad idea. But even if the victims ignore these messages, getting into a locked phone might be difficult, but it's not impossible. There are various ways for skilled hackers to bypass iCloud activation locks or crack passwords and resell stolen iPhones without any help from the former owner of the device. But all of this still leaves one question. 
Why are stolen phones from across the world tracing back to one location? My phone was stolen at Astro World almost a month ago. Now it's in my China. Wait, 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 time out, because my phone was stolen at Rolling Loud, right? If you look at their phone right here, you see this? You see this location? My phone is in the same spot as theirs. While some have suggested it's the circle of life, now it's in Shenzhen, which is kind of funny and sweet because it's headed back to its place of birth or its hometown. The facts suggest a less mystical theory. After all, these stolen phones aren't just located throughout the country, but often trace back to one city, Shenzhen, China, the mystery land of lost appliances. For years, various internet users have traced their missing phones to the once quaint fishing village that has since been heralded as China's Silicon Valley. And again, these pings from stolen devices can often be further pinpointed to a specific block in Shenzhen full of phone refurbishment shops and electronic stores which are now littered with one-star reviews. But despite the comments from unsatisfied customers, my iPhone 8 just appeared today here and find my phone after two months lost. Stolen iPhone of both me and my friend has been traced to here, including words of warning. My iPhone that was stolen just got traced here. Don't buy it here. Grand statements. Stop the flow of stolen phones being sent to China to evade the law enforcement. And conclusions. They are not secondhand products. They are stolen products. The negative reviews are the closest most of these victims will ever come to justice. See, while some have joked about flying to China to retrieve lost phones, That's it. I'm gonna f China. I'll see y'all in a few days. Because that flight be long as f <laughs> I can make money back, but I will never be 23 hunting down my stolen iPhone in Shenzhen, China again. Most are aware that traveling thousands of miles to reunite with their stolen device is an impossible mission for the non-Indiana Jones-level adventurers of the world. As one Reddit user put it, no amount of reward is going to get it back. Only way possible is for someone to physically go to China and confront the person who has it, though they are probably innocent and just bought it from a shop. Even then, the Chinese police are going to believe their own citizen over you. But while the too distant location is a taunting reminder rather than an actionable piece of evidence for most victims, there was one man who made the journey across the world. And we'll get to his story shortly. But first, let's look at why these stolen devices are showing up here. Why China? And more specifically, why Shenzhen? There are two prevailing theories. The first states that these phones are being sold across Shenzhen's thriving market, Huaxiang Bay. Among the stalls, floors, and multiple buildings at Huaxiang Bay, visitors won't find any of the spices, hand-picked flowers, or crafts typical of markets around the world. This is because Huaxiang Bay has a specific clientele in mind the technologically inclined. This market's super chaotic. There's people pushing and shoving everywhere. There's stacks of phones everywhere you look. Here, vendors offer everything from cell phone repairs to gadgets of all shapes and sizes that, as you might notice, aren't above defying intellectual property laws. And while a locked iPhone linked to an iCloud account can be impenetrable to an outsider, who's to say thieves are looking for a way in? See, Huaqiang Bay isn't just a one-stop shop for visitors' technological needs. As the largest electronic parts market in the world, Huaqiang Bay democratizes the ability to develop technological products by selling the pieces required to build them. This means locked stolen devices can still turn a profit. They just have to be stripped for parts first. So they'll probably sell the screen, they'll sell the battery, they'll sell the speaker, they'll sell all the other parts in the phone that aren't connected to your phone's logic board. As one Reddit user wrote, Ah yes, Shenzhen, the city where people casually disassemble iPhones and sell the parts out of it for cheap. I'm not kidding. You want parts for an iPhone? Go to Shenzhen. In fact, YouTuber Strange Parts did just that when he used the resources available at the market to build his own iPhone in 2017. For no receipts, no contracts, uh, in a very gray area, um, people are very honorable. However, one user explained how these repair shops have become a real problem for businesses that actually do make a living off of just fixing phones. This is part of the reason why Apple likes to lock components out and prevent independent repair shops from operating. But at the same time, doing so hurts right to repair. And the second theory? Well, that's based around a certain business with a factory located less than an hour away from where these stolen iPhones are ending up. Foxconn is a multinational electronics manufacturing company 
that's responsible for supplying products for Amazon, Nintendo, Apple, and other electronic heavyweights. And while the Fortune 500 company is considered to be the largest technology manufacturer in the world, recent supply chain issues have convinced them that the business may have gone to extreme measures to secure parts, even if that involved buying them on the black market. After all, this theory doesn't seem out of character for a company that continuously dances around the question of ethics with its history of human rights violations. However, there's no evidence that makes the hypothesis anything more than speculative. The truth is, stolen devices have been showing up in Shenzhen long before the troubles with Foxconn's supply chain began. In fact, a BuzzFeed employee even wrote an article about their iPhone winding up in China back in 2015, a story that ended up inciting bizarre twist after bizarre twist. While looking through photos on his phone, journalist Matt Stapera noticed something out of place, or rather, someone. There was like 30 selfies of this man posing very seriously with an orange tree. The writer scrolled back further on his camera roll, only to find more photos he'd never taken. Matt couldn't figure out why this was happening. Was he being hacked? Were his and this stranger's iCloud somehow crossing? Had he virtually intersected with an alternate dimension? Mystery images continued to gravitate to the writer's camera roll like messages in a bottle to a shoreline. Although, if there was anything to be learned from the photos, the writer was lost. A menu, storefronts, a photo of Avril Lavigne? What did these photos say about the mystery person? It wasn't until a friend asked if his phone had ever been stolen, and the writer recalled a night over a year ago when his phone was taken at a local bar in the East Village. And she goes, you know most stolen iPhones end up in China. Matt's friend encouraged him to take his phone back to the Apple store, where he logged into his iPhone and saw it was his old phone on the network. I never killed that iPhone and my iCloud was still logged into that phone. So basically it was sending me all of the pictures that were being taken on that phone to my new phone. Matt decided to activate Apple's kill switch, essentially making his stolen phone useless to its new owner. At the time, he believed this meant his virtual encounters with the mystery man had met their natural conclusion. I go to bed that night thinking, okay, now the story is definitely over. That's when totally hits the fan. Overnight, Matt had become a minor celebrity in China, as his article had blown up on the country's version of Twitter, Weibo. And users weren't just amused by the story, they were inspired. Man, I'm Chinese, and in our country, we are trying to find this man. You are famous in China now. Perhaps, together, they could unite Matt with the man from the photos. They're telling me, okay, we're gonna find this guy, you guys are meant to be, this is the greatest love story that we've ever heard of all time. And I'm like, Ooh. And eventually, Weibo users did the impossible. They found the man from the photos, who they had now dubbed Brother Orange. The two strangers arranged a meetup in Brother Orange's hometown, Meizhou Guangdong and the media and fans followed their story from the first meeting oh my God, Brother Orange! to their press tour of mud baths, planting an orange tree, and apparently holding babies. And despite the language barrier, with the help of translation apps, Matt learned Brother Orange had received his phone as a gift from his cousin who bought it at, you guessed it, Shenzhen. When Brother Orange received the phone, Matt's photos were still on it, as were photos of the thief. And just like the photos of Brother Orange were showing up on Matt's phone, the writer's photos were showing up on his phone as well. Soon enough, Brother Orange wasn't just a mystery to Matt at all. He was a father of four, a food lover, and a guy who was just as perplexed by their sudden fame as Matt was. And as Matt's tour of signing autographs, attending press conferences, and bizarre photo ops approached its end, both Matt and Brother Orange found themselves writing the same wish on the ribbons of red paper they tied to a tree in a ceremony, that they'd remain friends for life. Matt found himself adopting the Chinese belief in fate and destiny. It's big in Chinese culture and another reason why this story was so big there. This is more than just a series of crazy, random coincidences that changed our lives. It's fate, Matt wrote. What else could explain the series of events that had connected him to Brother Orange? On Matt's last full day in Guangdong, the two decided not to do media. Instead, they explored Brother Orange's parents' home, the tree he used to climb as a boy, and held a ceremony for his ancestors. People in China don't just open themselves up like this, Matt acknowledged. I am now his family. We are brothers. When the two performed karaoke together that night, they couldn't hold back their tears. With the premise of parting being unbearable, Brother Orange made the last minute decision to buy a ticket to Beijing to join Matt for the last few days of his trip. But eventually, Matt had to go back to America and leave Brother Orange behind. Still, Matt knew this wasn't the end of their story. I know there will be a chapter four. I know I will see bro again. This isn't it. It's destiny. 
I now believe in fate, Matt wrote, and be it the unseen forces of fate, coincidence, or just plain luck, the two would see each other again. In April 2015, both Matt and Brother Orange were invited to appear on The Ellen Show, where Brother Orange explained the significance of those first orange photos with the help of a translator. It's during Chinese New Year, right? Uh -huh. I wanted to go and uh, buy some oranges. Oh, I see. And <laughs> so you just thought you'd take about 30 photos of yourself. <laughs> and after the show, Brother Orange traveled to New York to visit Matt. This time, he was on Matt's turf. But as heartwarming as the journey between Matt and Brother Orange was, most cell phone theft cases don't end with a lifelong friend. Cell phone trafficking is a lucrative, albeit criminal, transnational trade where devices are stolen by members of criminal organizations and resold overseas. And while China might be the epicenter for missing cellulars, phones stolen in the United States have been found on nearly every continent except Antarctica. But law enforcement has already started cracking down on these operations by laying charges. When they were arrested, police say their bags were full of stolen phones. All four of them have been charged with felony theft. Busting organizations from Texas to Colombia, and even opening up a tip line to help catch a pickpocket first exposed on TikTok. Hey, she's still a phone. Yeah, she's still a phone. She's still a phone, sir. However, dismantling a trade that operates on a transnational level isn't going to happen overnight. So how can individuals prevent themselves from becoming targets? First and foremost, stay attached to your phone. Whether it's a pop socket, a wrist strap, or your run-of-the-mill lanyard, anything that tethers a user to their device can provide an obstacle just big enough to deter a petty crook. If physically linking yourself to your phone isn't an option, don't trust the back pocket to keep a pricey piece of technology safe from stealthy fingers. Instead, keep your device in an inside pocket, a purse, or a backpack to make it inaccessible to strangers passing by. But if you have the misfortune of having your phone stolen, what should you do? Well, now is as good a time as ever to practice a little foresight. TikToker Sagan Yalchin shared tips on how to level up iPhone security and keep any potential thieves out. Go to screen time, content and privacy restrictions, turn it on. Go to account changes, don't allow. Passcode changes, don't allow and then set up a screen time passcode that is not the main one. Skip the Apple ID recovery. And even sharing your location with a trusted friend might be the difference between reuniting with your stolen device and never seeing it again. In fact, one festival attendee was able to use iPhone's Find My feature to not only track his friend's stolen phone to the thief's home and inform the police, but his pursuit also helped various other victims as law enforcement recovered 91 other stolen phones in garbage bags left outside the home. Thanks to technology and a persistent pickpocket victim, dozens of people have their phone back. Still, when it comes to cell phone theft, it's clear prevention is key. After all, no location, passcode, or face detection technology can bring a phone back after it's been swept into the illegal transnational trade of stolen devices. For a tiny object, a cell phone can sure inspire an intense story. From a heartwarming tale of cultures uniting... Every day I'm learning more and more about um, China and I never thought that this would ever happen. ...to criminal behavior... It's clear our ties to these devices are capable of pulling on every part of human existence. And as cell phones become their own currency, with a whole underground market devoted to their trade, it doesn't look like the world will be untethered from its relationship with phones anytime soon.